Hey everyone, it's Leon Epp. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today I am working on these two little tables here that a customer, actually a previous customer, asked me to redo them for her. So the tables themselves were actually in really good shape. As you can tell, physically they don't have um, broken legs or anything like that, but they were swiveling a little bit, like the top. So I just had to um, tighten it, tighten the screws, and that's all that it needed to have. The, the, what took me the longest was finding a, a bit that would um, fit that type of screw. But once that was done, I then um, cleaned everything off with a crud cutter. Now, this again, these tables were in really good shape, so they weren't dirty, but in some of the creases, you could see a lot more dirt, so I made sure that I cleaned everything very, very well. So I am using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the Country Gray. It's one of my favorite colors. It's a very toned down gray, but um, so it's, uh, I usually tend to go with the lighter colors. That's what I like the most. So this is a really good alternative to the whites that I normally go to. However, this is exactly what my customer wanted. So I am going to give everything two coats and then let it fully dry. So after the two coats were fully dry, I am going to be distressing the tables. Now the customer did not want it uh, too heavily distressed, but maybe just a little bit, little bit in the corners and the edges. So that's what I'm doing here. I am using a 180 grit sandpaper, and then um, I did the legs, and I also did the edges of the top, and that's it. I kept it in real time here for uh, a few seconds, just so that you can see. Um, how, how quickly it distresses. I'm, I mean, the 180 grit, I could have used a 220 as well, but um, the 180 is what I had on hand and it worked perfectly fine. After I had distressed all the edges, I dusted everything and wiped it down to make sure that no dust was left on the surface. And now I'm going to be sealing everything with the Verithane uh, poly polyurethrin, and this is in the crystal clear. I'm also using a sponge applicator that I got. It'll be linked down in the description box. Most of the products that I'm using today, if not all, will be linked in the description box down below if you want to take a look at them. The um, sponge applicator just makes it so easy. It's just like wiping it down. Um, the one thing I do wanna have you, uh, if you use one of these, is that um, if you do not want a distressed look, sometimes it does remove a little bit of the paint um, from the edges. So in this case, you can't notice because um, it was already distressed, but um, I have done it before and it does remove because you're just wiping it down. So the um, as the paint gets wet, it reactivates and then it removes some of the paint. But in this case, it worked out fine. Actually, in most cases, for me, it works out fine because I do like my furniture distressed. I did two coats on the base and the legs, and then I did three coats on the top. Once I let the um, polyurethrin completely dry, I am now going to be waxing with uh, Dixie Belle uh, Bex Dang Wax in the brown and I am using a smaller chalk paint brush. Now this chalk paint brush has a little pointy to it, like a little pointy end to it. I like it particularly for what I'm doing here which is I'm trying to get it inside the creases 
of all the details and you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm keeping it in real time again so that you can see what I'm doing and you can see how quickly this can go. So I'm just wiping off the excess. The purpose of this is to make it look a little grungier, a little older, like antique kind of look. And so I'm just putting some on all the creases and edges, or not edges, but more the creases, and then wiping down the excess, making sure that it does, some of the wax does stay on the creases. If you do not seal the piece first, whether you're using a polyurethane or if you're using um, a wax, what will happen is that your color will change. The, the chalk paint is so porous and is so matte that the wax will not be, it could not wipe off. <laughs> it would not wipe off as easily. So that's why you want to seal, let it dry, and then go back and wax. I'm not one to use wax a lot. I like things just distressed. That's what the style I prefer. But um, I know that uh, this this look matches what the customer had sent me in some pictures of phone, some examples that she was kind of looking for. So I want to show you here the difference between the waxed and the non-wax. So the antique, antiquing wax just gives it again a little bit more dimension, a little bit more grungier look. Um, but I do want to say I do like the cleaner distressed look. So here's what the tables look like before and here's what they look like now. How cute! I mean seriously if you have tables at home that you just think oh I just don't like them anymore. Look what paint can do. A little bit of paint, a little bit of sandpaper, some top coat, and even if you didn't want to use the antiquing wax, I just think it just makes a world of a difference. So guys, as always, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking your time to watch. Hopefully you learned something or it inspires you to paint some furniture and do your own um, at home. But if you have not subscribed to my channel, I do ask to consider doing so right underneath this video. And I hope you have a blessed day.